For the case where the controller commands joint velocities, in the previous video we derived a feed forward plus PI feedback controller when the desired motion is expressed in joint space. Now consider the case where the desired motion is expressed as XD, the desired SE3 configuration of the end effector as a function of time. The corresponding twist VD at any instant of time is XD inverse times XD dot, which is the twist of the end effector expressed in the desired frame of the end effector. Similarly, the actual motion is defined by the actual configuration X as a function of time and VB, the end effector twist expressed in the end effector frame. Now we can write a task space version of our feed forward plus PI feedback controller. The controller commands the actual end effector twist VB. The feed forward component is the desired twist VD but expressed in the actual end effector frame. To change the frame of reference of the twist, we use the matrix adjoint of the transformation matrix XBD that expresses the desired configuration relative to the actual configuration. XBD is calculated as X inverse times XD, which we can derive by remembering our subscript cancellation rule and that XD can be written XSD and X can be written XSB, where S is the implicit space frame. Next, we add the PI feedback portion of the controller, replacing theta E with XE. The configuration error XE is not an element of SE3. Just as theta E represents a vector from the actual joint angles to the desired joint angles, XE is a twist pointing from the current configuration to the desired configuration. XBD, which we calculated earlier to be X inverse times XD, is the configuration of the desired frame relative to the actual frame, and the log calculates the matrix representation of the twist, expressed in the end effector frame, that goes from the actual frame to the desired frame in unit time. This twist is multiplied by the proportional gain KP and integrated and multiplied by the integral gain KI to get the PI feedback portion of the commanded velocity. The final controller can be written like this, a task space feed forward plus PI feedback control with velocity inputs. The actual joint velocities are calculated using the Jacobian inverse or pseudo inverse. This controller calculates the error between two configurations in terms of a twist. Another option is to decouple the rotational error and the linear error. Consider a configuration represented as a rotation matrix R and a position vector P. Then we can separately calculate the commanded angular velocity omega B and linear velocity P dot. The feed forward component for omega B expresses the desired angular velocity omega D in a frame actually oriented with the end effector. The feed forward linear velocity is just the rate of change of the P coordinates. The PI feedback portion of the controller defines a configuration error XE that has an angular velocity expressed in the end effector frame that takes the end effector to the desired orientation in unit time, as well as the typical coordinate error for the position P. The resulting control law is a decoupled task space controller with velocity controls. As an example, assume that the red frame represents a stationary desired configuration and the green frame represents the actual configuration. If we set the feed forward control and the gain ki to be zero, the task space controller that couples angular and linear errors produces a motion about a constant screw axis. The decoupled task space controller, on the other hand, carries the origin of the frame along a straight line path. This concludes our study of robot control with velocities as controls, but we'll see these control laws again in chapter 13 when we study wheeled mobile robots. For the rest of this chapter, we assume that the controls are joint torques and forces and consider the robot's dynamics.